What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode before we get into this one uh, I do want to mention that uh, we of course did miss uh, the last crack a pack episode I am really sorry about that. Uh, we were supposed to have one on Tuesday Unfortunately, uh, the internet across our entire city actually went out. Uh, I know that sounds really far-fetched and I believe, you know, I, skepticism, whatever, but uh, genuinely, somebody cut wires and it actually caused a huge, huge issue in our area. So, uh, we actually just couldn't upload one. Uh, and so, I was also out of town and so it just didn't make sense to record anything if I couldn't upload it anyway. Uh, and so, yeah, it actually feels like a long time since I've recorded one of these because the last one was like, well over a week ago because I was pre-recording knowing I would be out of town uh, for about a week and a half. So uh, I do apologize, but we are back on schedule now and we are uh, opening up a pack of Homelands today. Uh, not the most exciting thing in terms of value, but it is really fun to open up these old sets, see what kind of cards we get. I don't really know this set very well. I know there's a couple of like okay cards, but generally speaking, it's mostly pretty low value stuff. Uh, I do not know at all where the rare is gonna be. Uh, I know I've opened these a couple times, but they're so sporadic that genuinely I just, I can never remember. So hopefully we get something awesome, uh, but we will go through every card. And our first card here is Anaba Shaman. Uh, I hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a 2-2 two -two for 3 and a red. You can pay a red and tap it, and it deals 1 damage to target creature or player. Uh, I actually like this card. It's not terrible. Uh, it is fairly slow. Uh, at 4, you're playing a 2-2 two -two that only pings stuff, and you have to pay mana to do that. Uh, but creatures were kind of devalued around this time. The creatures were not necessarily the best things to play with back in the day. Uh, and so, honestly, this is probably not as bad as it seems nowadays. So, uh, while this is not a good card by any means, uh, it's actually not terrible, and then it can pick off some early game stuff and things like that. Obviously, it does come into play late, which is the big downside here. Uh, shrink, an instant for one green. Target creature gets minus five, minus zero until end of turn. This is a classic combat trick. Uh, normally, we see combat tricks adding power or uh, and or toughness to one of your creatures, but in this case, you're obviously you're going to be shrinking the opponent's creatures and hopefully getting into a favorable uh, combat position based off of that. Uh, and so this is perfectly fine. Uh, it's just kind of a combat trick. Ideally, you'll think of it as maybe a removal spell in your deck. Uh, one mana instant speed removal spell, though, is not terrible. So I do kind of like it for that reason. Uh, but you are a little bit conditioned into having creatures that are actually going to be able to block that creature. Uh, so it's a little bit worse than just a straight up removal spell. Uh, I don't really like this. I'd rather have the Shaman. Uh, this is a perfectly fine card. I would play this in a green deck. Uh, but I prefer something that impacts the board and pingers tend to be pretty, pretty good uh, in limited. Uh, Singir Bats is a 1-2 for 1 and 2 black. It does have flying, and whenever a creature is put into the graveyard the same turn that the bats damaged it, uh, you can put a 1-1 one, one counter on the Singir Bats. Uh, this is a really interesting card. I like this one a lot. Uh, for 3 mana, you get a 1-2 flyer, which is honestly not the worst. It's okay. Uh, it's, I mean, it's a flyer, so it's perfectly fine in that regard. Uh, but it also has the added bonus of being able to buff itself up. Uh, if you can maybe use a combat trick or something like that to, to hopefully, uh, deal a little bit more extra damage to some opposing creatures and keep the bats around. Uh, in that instance, I do think it's quite good. I'm going to keep it with the shaman for now, though. I don't necessarily think it's better. Honestly, I'm not hundred percent sure. So we will see what we get. Uh, Reef Pirates. This may be the rare. Uh, it's a 2-2 two, two for 1 and 2 blue. When it damages any opponent, take the top card of his or her library and put it into her, into their graveyard. Uh, so this is a really interesting uh, card. Uh, so it's really not very good. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3 that anytime it deals damage straight up to the opponent, you do get to mill a card and mill in limited generally pretty good just because uh, there's less cards to actually go through. So while this is not your only game plan, hopefully if you're in mill, uh, it is actually fairly easy to mill somebody out. Uh, this is obviously a little too slow to do it by itself, but you are getting cards out of their, out of their deck. And that's worth noting, I would say. But uh, it is a 2-2 two, two for 3 still. That seems bad. Uh, again, creatures were devalued during this time, but it is kind of just straight up a 2-2. Two -two. It doesn't have any added effect. It literally has to attack to do anything. Uh, and so I kind of like that less uh, than especially the Shaman, but uh, also the Bats. So not super exciting there. Uh, Mesa Falcon. 
uh, is a 1-1 one, one for one and a white. It does have flying and you can pay one and a white and it gets plus zero plus one until the end of the turn. There's just a perfectly fine two drop flyer. Uh, no real huge downside to a card like this. Uh, it's a two, it's a one, one, four, two, but it, because it has flying, it makes it a little more worth it. And you can actually do some cool stuff by buffing it. Uh, it gives you a little bit of a mana sink and allows you to attack in maybe where you not always could. Uh, and so for that reason, I like it. I like other cards that we have better. They do a little bit more, but this is a perfectly fine card. Uh, Folk of An Hava. I hope I am saying that correctly. Uh, it's a one one for one green. If it's uh, assigned as a blocker, it gets plus two plus zero until the end of the turn. Uh, this is like a perfectly fine one one. Uh, I actually don't hate this card at all. I think it's perfectly fine. It's not super exciting. It doesn't really lean you into an aggressive strategy by any means. This really kind of wants to hold itself back, but uh, it is something that your opponent has to get through and a three one for one on blocks is pretty good. Uh, it's going to trade up most of the time and so I do like it for that reason. Uh, as I'm looking through this pack though, we've already seen two one ones, which makes me want to take the shaman a little bit more, especially over this card. So, uh, giant oyster, there's a lot of text on this one. So a zero three for two and two blue, uh, you may choose not to untap the oyster during your untap phase. You can tap it and target tapped creature does not untap during its controllers untap phase. As long as giant oyster remains tapped. Uh, during your upkeep, put a negative one, negative one counter on that creature. If the giant oyster becomes untapped or leaves play, remove all of these counters from that creature. Uh, so this is a really interesting long-term kind of tempo -y spell. Uh, yes, theoretically, you could chug through all of your opponent's creatures with a card like this, but... Uh, it is pretty slow, so just keep that in mind. That being said, I actually really like this card. I don't know if this is good. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to play with it, uh, but it doesn't seem to have a huge downside to me. Yes, it's a little expensive. Obviously, it's just a 0-3, but you're not actually using it that much as like an actual creature. You're using it more just to tap down the opponent's stuff and then hopefully eventually be able to just knock some of their stuff out. Uh, especially if they've got a field of just 1-1s and stuff, you can just tap this and then... Uh, during your upkeep, it negative one, negative one counter gets placed on it. It dies. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so I do like it for that reason, but it did, it is really, really slow. I'm going to keep it here for now, but I'm not super sold on it. Uh, and our last card here is mammoth harness. So for three and a green, you get an enchant creature target play or target creature, excuse me, loses flying. If any creature is assigned to block the creature mammoth harness enchants or has the creature mammoth mammoth harness enchants assigned to block it. That creature gains first strike until the end of the turn. This just seems really bad and convoluted and not all that exciting. So uh, for me, it's between the giant oyster, the Singir bats and the shaman. I lean towards the shaman uh, personally, just because pingers are pretty good. As we saw, there are a couple of one ones in here that actually have some upside for playing. Uh, and so I would expect to run into maybe at least a couple of them uh, throughout the games. So I think this is the best bet again, a little bit slow, uh, but I do think it's the best one. So. That's my opinion. Feel free to disagree in the comment sections below. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.